Welcome back to Bull Sessions here on 680 KFEQ. Here's your host, Randy Baker and agronomist Brad Law. Uh, Brad, we made her back. Thank right. God we're back on the air again. Um, while we was at the break, I was looking over your soil. You were rummaging through my papers. I, I was. So I want to make sure to keep you on track. You okay. stray from that at times. I don't get this. It says mom's pond, the 160. What does that mean on a soil test? Okay. Well, see there, we ID'd our samples. And this sample's back These from are your samples? My samples. Okay. Okay. Back in, uh, you remember the drought of 2012? I do very okay. well. Well, during that drought, I went out, and uh, I've got a little bobcat, and uh, mm-hmm. the pond dried up. Mm-hmm. So no, you know, rain. no, no rain. No rain. That happens in a so drought. So you know what I did in that pond? <laughs> oh, tell me. <laughs> I drove my skid loader out into uh-huh. it. <laughs> okay, so I drove out in there because it was solid, and I started doing some digging because I needed a little dirt for a project. Mm-hmm. And see, soil is what we farm. Dirt is what construction guys work with. So there's two different things. There's soil and then there's dirt. Well, I needed dirt. Mm -hmm. Well, then I realized as I was scooping this charcoal black stuff out of the pond. Beautiful stuff. That, hey, maybe this stuff is good. Used to belong to your neighbor. Yes. And, well, I was daydreaming, (laughs) and then I I got a little too far and buried the bobcat. Uh So, But uh, what we did here, this, this soil test was I have to do things to help me understand. Mm-hmm. Okay, and they're little farmerized deals that it makes sense to me, and maybe I can relay that through the airways how it makes sense to everybody else. You took the dirt out of the pond. I so took you the dirt out of the pond, pond. and I made I put it in a pile, and then I took a sample of that dirt and I sent it to the lab. Mm-hmm. Well, I needed something to compare it to, okay. So I went over to a spot that just kicks butt, Randy. Oh, it no. kicks butt. Okay, it's one of the best spots on the farm now over at Mom's. Fired. And I soil sampled that, and I put it in a different bag, Mm -hmm. and then I went down to a pasture. Mm -hmm. And the neat thing about that pasture is it's never been plowed. Okay. Oh, it's had cattle on it and everything, but it's got, you know, where Grandpa had some bulls that liked to fight, and they wallered bull holes, you know, Mm -hmm. just holes that make it fun if you ever mow it or try to put up hay (laughs) on it. It throws you around the cab. Uh But um, I pulled those because I wanted those as a baseline to see some differences. You know, that's when I saw that the organic matter at Mom's was 3.6%, which was pretty good, and we were doing a lot of tillage there. So I was impressed with that. I looked at that 160. Well, that had a 5.4% organic matter. So we saw that, oh, well, all that continual, you know, being in grass raised up that organic matter. Mm Mm-hmm. So and your free fertilizer there. The free well. fertilizer. And what I noticed is, you know, here on the phosphorus levels, mm-hmm. my pond had more phosphorus in it than what my pasture did. Mm-hmm. You know? And then we go down here on the bottom side of the soil test, we start looking at things like zinc. You know what zinc does for a corn plant? No, I don't. Zinc's zinc is related for um test weight. Okay. And cold tolerance. Test weight's important. Yes, test weight <laughs> is because you can get a dockage if it's too well, light. Sure. And cold tolerance. Do you like to plant corn early? Uh, what do you mean by early? Oh, like <clears throat> in February? Uh, no. <laughs> well, no, never. Not, not quite February, but you know, a lot of people like planting the first of April. Oh yeah, late if it's March, dry, first of April. Get to rolling. Well, okay. it's, it's not a a uh, cure all, but zinc deals with cold tolerance. Okay, then the next thing over here, we noticed that So that, if you have a high zinc rating, you it, could plant well, earlier and probably get away with it not, easier than it, like me. Not exactly. You're going to have your plant when it's growing and you mm-hmm. get a cold spell, it's supposed to have better cold tolerance. Okay. Okay, I don't plant early, but I apply zinc because I want test weight. Sure. Okay. Sure. Then we go over and we've got manganese. Not magnesium, we've got manganese. Uh-huh. Okay. Big difference. That is one of the elements to, of life, reproduction. So when we're talking about seed beans mm-hmm. and we want good germs, that's why I like to apply manganese. Okay. Okay. And then we've got another one uh, called copper. You know what? Uh, copper. You know, you got probably got copper pipes in the house if it's mm-hmm. an older house. Mm-hmm. Pennies. Okay. Uh, yeah, the copper pennies. Well, that copper, it's a plant nutrients. That, you sure. know, that deals, did you know? Um, we're going to do another history lesson here. Oh, my. In ancient times, they used copper as a fungicide. 
Uh, no, I didn't know okay. that. Okay, copper can also, absolutely no sense no, to it, me. Well, it, it's a plant health deal. Okay. Okay, and it's also in the flexibility of the uh, plant. Copper can deal with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then we got another one that you know some people may say this is boring, but it's not boron. Boron <laughs> is not boring. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, and boron. You know what boron deals with? No. I really you're, don't. You're, you're striking out on this, That's Randy. why I hired you. You're a soils guy. <laughs> okay. I told well, you, I flunked the test. Well, I don't know diseases and uh, other stuff, but I know I can do soils here, okay? I sell I, you your beans, remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about that. I need the radio station discount on that, <laughs> yeah. plus the prepay discount. Oh, absolutely. Uh, is that better than the October or November prepay? Trust me, I'll fix you right up. And that's better than the quantity <laughs> discount. Okay. Well, on uh-huh. boron, boron deals with reproductive growth. So mm-hmm. why is that important? Okay, when we look at reproductive in soybeans. We look about blooms. You know, we want more. You want more blooms and more blooms that turn into pods, and then we want more beans in those pods to get more bushels. Mm-hmm. You know, but you know, I've applied boron on some fields, and uh, by in the form of borax. You mm-hmm. know, that stuff that they use as laundry used to use as laundry soap. Some people may still do. But yeah. 20 team borax, you yeah. can spread that on your field. You just got to be careful with your boron. You got to watch your calcium levels. If your calcium level is low, we don't want to put a bunch of boron out there because you can get toxicity. Well, with that boron out there, it made my beans, they were white flowered beans. I think they were 92, 32s, okay. uh, conventional, conventional buyback bean. Mm-hmm. I was growing that on the food grade deal to get a premium. Mm-hmm. Well, you could see those white blooms were so prominent. You could see those driving down the road. They Mm -hmm. were just so white and bright from where other fields that didn't have the boron or borax applied. Healthier plant. They were healthier plant, more reproductive. And we talk about, you know, one thing we talk about our corn on our agricultural corn. Mm -hmm. We talked about reproductive and we talk about different families. Like this is a family B. This is a family F. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at your family B's, they have a longer tassel and start to bend over. They do. Well, I've looked at, you know, had a guy come to, a couple years ago and looked at my cornfield, and he's like, that's the same number of corn I got, but we just looked at mine, and we're looking at yours, and my ta- your tassel is twice the size of mine. Okay. Well, that was all the boron it dealt to make sure we didn't have, you know, pollination issues. So we made sure our, we had plenty of boron, mm-hmm. you know, so that we can get, you know, I'm not satisfied with county yield. I want to be well, yeah. above, you know, I want to see sure. what's the possibility if we push this, you know, I don't want to just hook onto the sled and pull it 50 feet and be out. You know, we want to hook onto that sled and we want to pull it that 300 plus feet. Exactly. So that's one of those little bitty pieces, you know, we got to get the whole, the whole shebang working together and get it to be a fine tuned machine. We want it hitting on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. So we look at those um, nutrients. But what I did, those those soil tests from moms to the pond to the 160, that gave me a baseline. Mm -hmm. I knew how those spots did. I knew at moms that that spot kicked butt. It doesn't Mm -hmm. matter what somebody else, some other soil guy says. It doesn't matter, you know, what the recommendations are from the lab. I knew that that spot worked good for me. Uh You know, and I looked at, you know, it wasn't drainage. It was just a... Nice flat spot on the prairie, and that's why, you know, this is what the soil test was. So mm-hmm. I could look at that and base my others off that to say, okay, that agrees with the lab. That agrees with this soil guy. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how I built from there. And you do accordingly what you need to, right? I mean, you got your own fertilizer cart and spreader and all that, correct? Correct. You know, we bought that because we wanted to spread some lime, and the lime was five miles away. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got a dump truck, we got a fertilizer cart, and we got a skid loader. We hauled it in, we stockpiled it, and then we uh, spread Mm -hmm. lime. You know, and after wheat is a great time to spread lime. It pains slow down, it's dry, you can get that spread and get the time to do it. It Also, after wheat's a great time to uh, do tiling, it's a great time to put in a cover crop or maybe a forage crop. It kind of breaks that rotation, you know, so that wheat can... um, do that and i think last couple years ago i planted uh we'll cross 752 wheat yeah and it went i think 80 i remember you sent me pictures it it was good it was a phenomenal year so that that's something more that you know oh we can do that Mm -hmm. and we can chance to build that soil we can fix some drainage issues you know so it's not just what the soil test says it's not just what we're going to do we can how to work that in and it can be done it can i mean 
Well, I don't know that I want to say you work a full-time job at Will Cross Seed, <laughs> but you're there anyway, and yet you're farming quite a few acres, well, and you do cover crops, and you plant wheat, and you're raising 2.5 boys. Uh, we're working on that. You've got a lot of things going on, so there is time. We just, like everything else, we got to manage it. We have to. We have to manage it, and you know, when we talk about spreading lime, you know, we don't just say, well, just give me lime. I just need lime. Well, not all limes created equal, mm-hmm. Randy. You know, we've got to look at some lime has higher magnesium and uh, not as much calcium. Mm-hmm. You know, if where we're at here in northwest Missouri, we don't want doomlytic lime. We don't want to add any more magnesium to our soil because magnesium makes everything stick together. You know, mm-hmm. if you step out in, like, clay where you've been yep. digging a post hole or a basement on a house— and you get that stuff that sticks to your boots. Anywhere in my field. Water doesn't drain through that. Roots, if they sure. hit over 300 pounds of pressure, they don't want to dig through that. Or, you know, So we want to create tilth in our soil. We want mm-hmm. to balance and get that where water infiltrates. It doesn't run off. And we want to get that high calcium lime in there to build up that in the soil. You know, We want it at a certain level. I like to see the calcium levels up above 65% base saturation. Mm-hmm. You know, to get that up there, to get it... uh, What would be average? Average? I mean, we've got a stack of soil tests here, and they're anywhere from 40% to 80%. Right. Or 84% even. Right. But you like that 65. 65 to in the low 70s. It's not perfect, but somewhere in there. Well... Hang on a minute, Brad. Brad's wound up, but we got we got to take another little break here. So, uh, Well, Pepsi and Soils gets me excited. <laughs> we got to deal with that. So when we come back to Bull Sessions on 680 KFEQ, we'll listen to Brad some more. All right. All right. 